So I go out to the spot on the street and I just see him walking up the biggest smile on his face, pushing that cart full of food. He had walked out the back of the supermarket. We brought that food home. We walked it maybe about three miles back home. My mom confronted my brother, said, where'd you get all this food? And to this day, she says, I feel so bad. I couldn't tell him no because we didn't have any food. What's up, you misfits, you miscreants, you outcast of society? You know, sometimes I suffer from the inability to be physically responsible. I want to tell you a quick story from my past that this sort of mindset that I feel about money, being financially secure, definitely had an impact on it. At a young age, I remember my brother and he was about 12 years old, mind you, and I was only nine years old and he asked me to go to Ralph's with him. So I go to Ralph's with him, doing as the little brother does. I have really no idea why we're there. And he's like, you know what, Chris? What we're going to do is we're going to fill up the cart. We're going to just, you fill up whatever you want. Whatever you see, get it. I was like, dang, like Doritos, like cereal. Yeah, like this is going to be fun. We're going to have like a make-believe good time that we're going to get all this food. Because at the time, we were both living with our mother who was going through an episode of manic, manic depression. She had people coming into the house as roommates. We didn't have any food. In fact, there was a homeless dude at one time that was a roommate and he used to bring like day old donuts and expired milk from one of the local donut shops. And to be honest with you, I definitely partook in eating some of those donuts. We were just hungry. We just had not, we didn't have a lot going on. So we're, the, the cart is filled and, and my brother was being responsible at the time. He wasn't just buying junk food. He was buying meat and potatoes and, you know, things that he thought would be good dinners for us. And uh, I was just super excited with the, like the thought. It was like winning the lottery or, or getting a lottery ticket and thinking about what you would do with all the, the money that you would get, get if you win, right? So he tells me when we put the last bit of food inside there, it's packed. It's almost overflowing. He tells me, meet me out front on the street. And I look at him. I'm like, what do you mean meet you out front? He's like, dude, just do what I say. Meet me out front on the street. I don't know. I didn't mess around with my brother like that. When he told me to do something, I did it. Otherwise, he would he would smack me down a little bit. So I listened and I see him go out the back area where the, the butcher is, where the meat market through the doors. And as I'm walking away, I'm like, what the, what is he doing? Right? So I go out to the spot on the street and I just see him walking up the biggest smile on his face, pushing that cart full of food. He had walked out the back of the supermarket. We brought that food home. We walked it maybe about three miles back home. My mom confronted my brother said, where'd you get all this food? And to this day, she says, I feel so bad. I couldn't tell him no, because we didn't have any food. But what that did to him and that what that did to me really messed with me psychologically. And, and, and on top of that, she would write bad checks knowing that we didn't have money to cover certain items. And if I could get, give another little insight to that, when I had my skate shop, I used to write checks, even though I would write checks to skateboard companies for product, right? Cause they would give you like 30 days until you had to pay. But I would write a check knowing that I didn't have any of the money to cover that check. Check, but just hoping over the weekend that I would intake a good amount that would be I would be able to recover it. So all these little things when you grow up in a poor family have profound effects on the psyche. And today I'm going to further discuss that a little bit. So I really hope that you stick around. And if you struggle with the finances, I think that you'll get a little bit of insight. And if anything, this will be the catalyst for you to dig a little bit deeper for yourself and to better understand what it means and for you to dig yourself out of that cycle. There's a loop going on there. So understanding the psychological behind financial decisions can be a valuable insight, like I said, especially for someone who has witnessed poor financial choices firsthand. Growing up in a situation where money is a constant worry can make you feel anxious and confused, uh, confused about how to manage it. Let's explore why people make certain financial choices and how you can use the knowledge to make better decisions in the future. There's definitely an emotional impact of poverty. Growing up in poverty can have a significant emotional impact. When money is tight, every financial decision feels like it carries extra 
extra weight. Parents might make a desperate choice, like writing bad checks, like I mentioned, or taking money from a jar meant for something else because they are trying to immediate the needs. These actions are often driven by fear, stress, and the pressure of trying to provide for their family with limited resources. Financial stress can cloud judgments, lead to impulsive decisions. When a parent is under stress, they might not think through the long-term consequences of their actions. For example, like my mom, writing a bad check might seem like a quick fix to pay a bill, but it can lead to more significant problems. Bank fees or legal issues, stress can make it hard to think clearly and make rational choices, leading to a cycle of poor financial decisions. Another critical factor is a lack of financial education. Many people, especially those who grew up poor, might not have had the opportunity to learn about managing money effectively. Without this knowledge, it's easy to make mistakes. Understanding how to budget, save, and use credit wisely are essential skills that can help prevent financial problems. If someone doesn't know these basics, they might make decisions that seem good in short term, but are harmful in the long run. Financial habits, whether good or bad, play a significant role in decision making. Habits are behaviors that we repeat regularly, often without thinking. If a parent has developed bad financial habits, like spending money as soon as they get it or not planning for future expenses, these habits can be hard to break. Children often learn these habits from the parents, which can perpetuate a cycle of poor financial management. Certain psychological traps can also influence financial decisions. One common trap is the scarcity mindset, which occurs when someone feels they never have enough money. This mindset can lead to hoarding cash or making impulsive purchases out of fear that they might not have that chance later on. Another trap is present bias, where people focus on immediate needs and desires rather than planning for the future. This can result in spending money now rather than saving for emergencies or future goals. But there's strategies for better financial decisions. Understanding the psychology behind financial decisions is the first step towards making better choices. Here are some strategies that I think can help you, and I hope that they do. You have to educate yourself. Learning about financial management can empower you to make informed decisions. Books, online courses, and financial advisors can provide valuable knowledge about budgeting, saving, investing, and using credit wisely. There's an abundance here on YouTube. You have to check them out. Next, you gotta set goals. Having clear financial goals can help you stay focused and motivated, whether it's saving for college or buying a car or building an emergency fund. Setting goals gives you a direction for your money. You have to create a budget. A budget is a plan for how you will spend and save your money. It can help you see where your money's going, identify areas where you can cut back. Sticking to a budget can prevent overspending and help you save for future needs. It builds healthy habits. Developing good financial habits like saving regularly or avoiding unnecessary debt can lead to long-term financial stability. Start small by setting aside a portion of your allowance or paycheck each week, even if it's $25 or if it's 20. Finding healthy ways to cope with stress can prevent it from affecting your financial decisions. Activities like exercise or meditation or talking to a friend or a counselor can help you manage stress and make clearer decisions. Understanding the psychology behind financial decisions can help you break the cycle and I know you want to break it. We need to break this poor financial management cycle by learning from the past and making informed thoughtful choices. You can build a more secure financial future. As I always say, it's never too late to change your financial habits and take control of your money. So let's overview the psychological factors influencing financial decisions and providing practical strategies for making better choices. By understanding these aspects, you can pave the way for a more secure and stable financial future, breaking the cycle of poor financial management, often witnessed in families struggling with poverty. I know that you can do it. I still struggle with it. I'm not perfect, but I definitely try to implement by saving, by not overspending or doing impulsive spending. One of the main stressors that I have had in my post getting out of prison experience has been dealing with the poor mindset. I was stuck 
in this loop over and over and over, building up my wealth, building up my savings, doing good, figuring out what goals that I, I wanted to achieve, and then lived by that. Let my actions live by that. But what would happen was because I didn't know, I was so comfortable being in that fight or flight state of mind and that sense of scarcity that I talked about earlier. I didn't want to live like that anymore. I understood I understood the burden and the weight that I carried with me, that stress, and I was over it. And I know that you are over it, but I hope that this video just kicks it off a little bit for you if you are suffering from that. If you have gone through any of what I've covered in this video or what I've talked about, this is your sign. You can make it happen. You just have to retrain. You have to recondition. You have to rewire your mind. And believe me, when you have an account with 10,000 plus in your savings and you have all your bills paid, I'm not talking about just getting money so you could spend it on material items. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about you being financially secure and stable so you're not living within stress about how am I going to pay my next bill. That's going to conclude it for this episode of Screaming at a Wall. I'm your host, Casper, and I appreciate your time. If you found any value in this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And we are close to 500 subscribers, so I want to say thank you for that. Even though we had a two-year hiatus, uh, we're back and I feel the momentum and I feel the energy and the interactions that I've had and I'm just glad to be here and I'm glad that you're here with me. Until next time, stay free. Peace. Bad religion. Bad religion. Regurgitate. Indecision. It's not too late. Bad religion. Bad religion. Bad. All right. Peace.